Hello, and welcome back to the second video where I rank all 32 chapters in Super Paper Mario. I decided to make two parts so YouTube doesn't, like, cut it out since I can't upload it. Anyways, number 15 is chapter 3-2, Bloops Ahoy. This chapter has you go through with a bunch of bloop, a bunch of fight a giant blooper, and Bowser flails his arms, as Dementio calls it, the flailing nubbins, which becomes a meme. It's pretty funny. But other than that, it's just, like, a simple puzzle. And you also see, um, and you also see a pixel... Um, called Thud, um, Thudley, and Thudley is, like, obsessed with, like, weight, and, like, <laughs> Peach weighs more than Bowser, so it's pretty funny. Number 14 is 5-2, Pixels, Tablets, and Craig. This level is pretty much just a huge puzzle, which involves you getting three stone tablets. One is under a river, one is next to a fire, and the final one is in a volcano. But then when you get all three stone tablets, you find, you get a pixel called, um, called Kudge, and Kudge is pretty much this game's hammer. You get him pretty late on, but he's still pretty cool. You actually allow, He actually allows you to say a motto, and you can say whatever you want, so, uh, yeah, you can go crazy with it, so it's pretty funny. And you also fight O-Chunks again, which is alright. Number 13 is Chapter 8-1, Impending Darkness. The first level of Chapter 8, it's pretty intense. You know, you have this huge foreboding castle, um, ca castle black... You fight O-Chunks, and Bowser and O-Chunks try to um, challenge each other who can hold off and hold on the ceiling the longer. It's a really good chapter, and it's just the right amount of difficult, because this game isn't really too difficult, at least for someone like me who's played it a lot. It isn't that bad, but it's still pretty fun, and it's an overall great opening chapter. Number 12 um, Number twelve is chapter 8-2, The Crash. The chapter that immediately follows the impending darkness is The Crash. We fight Mimi as Peach, and Peach is really mad at Mimi this time, even more than last time. So you fight her in Castle Black, and then the ceiling, and then the, the floor falls, and you get in, uh, Mimi. Mimi is actually rescued from falling to death from Peach, so that's a pretty surprising turn of events. Other than that, it's just a normal chapter, and there isn't really nothing, not really nothing else of interest. It's still really good, though. Number 11 is one is chapter 1-4, The Monster of the Ruins. The first boss level, well, outside of O-Chunks, the first boss level to unlock you a pure heart, you go through the ruins, and I pretty much have the ruins memorized right now, the, um, the old ruins, I know every part of it, and then you faced off, um, and then you meet the, the almighty Fractale, one of the, probably the largest boss in, not just Paper Mario, but Mario history, he's just so big, Fractale, and what you do against him is you have to climb on his back and you gotta throw you gotta throw these little fractoids on like his antenna with dementia makes him go haywire and like quite literally actually because he's like a robot and then you get the pure heart from merlumia it's a really good like um final level of like the first chapter and it does its job very well Number 10 is chapter 6-3, World of Nothing. Although I'm not officially called that, World of Nothing or 6-3. And this level really is a World of Nothing, that's what the song is called. You basically travel through this huge, empty, vast world. Nothing really of interest. So why is it this high? Well, you fight Mr. L again and Brobot L-Type. And it's really cool. And the music for both the World of Nothing and Brobot L-Type is like really ominous, really intense. Just really cool, and I really enjoy it. It's incredibly short, probably one of the shortest chapters of the game, but it's still a lot of fun. I've always enjoyed it. Number nine is chapter two dash one, Bogging to Merlees. This level is beautiful. I love Gloom Valley, the whole sunset vibe, the whole marsh and swampland, and I like how you can turn into the um, you can use the Mega Star to turn into like the eight bit Mario or eight bit Peach, and then you get inside the mansion at the end. It's just it's not really anything that really. Like, progresses the story or any interesting it's just a really just well designed chapter and i really enjoy it number eight is the first chapter of the game chapter one dash one adventure unfolds it's the place where you learn about all the game's mechanics such as the enemies tippy's pointer and bestovius when it gives you the, the ability to flip from 2d into the 3d the 3d dimension that's pretty cool and then you get the mega star at the end it's just really solid platforming usually first of all some mario games aren't too interesting but this one's always just been pretty fun it's designed really well. I, I really like it. Chapter um, number seven is chapter two dash four, the basement face off. This is when Mimi reveals her true colors and turns us into a giant horrifying spider. You travel through the base. Um, you pa travel through the maze in the basement, and then you go into the woman's bathroom and you do a quiz show to see if it's Merle or Mimi who's real. Then you fight Mimi in her spider form. 
it's absolute insanity. It's one of the reasons I love this game so much, because it's so crazy and unpredictable. So, yeah, that's why it's so high. Chapter number six is chapter 4-4, Mysterious Mr. L. So, the whole, um, the whole whoa zone area really does make you say whoa, because it's just this huge maze. It can be pretty confusing, but it's also a lot of fun, in my opinion. Even though it can be tedious, I still, I, I still enjoy it, pretty much. Then you face up, then you meet Mr. L, and you fight him normally, like, how you'd fight any old boss. Like, he's just jumping around. But then he goes into his spaceship, and he has 255 HP. That's more HP than the final boss, which is absolutely insane. The robot travels really fast. The music's catchy, you're going through space. You're firing at him with squirps, like a torpedo gun. It's just so much fun, and I've always enjoyed it. And then Squirps goes back to the statue with his mother, and of course you get the pure heart. So much fun, and I love Mr. L. Number 5 is Chapter 2-3, Breaking the Bank. This is a very controversial level. A lot of people stop playing the game at this point, or just overall just get really annoyed. Because you actually, um, after breaking Mimi's very valuable, probably not that valuable, vase, she gets really mad at you, and she forces you to become a slave and collect one million rubies. Yeah, that's right, one million red rupees for her. Um, and she's really upset at you. You go around, you find a bunch of different, um, you find a bunch of different codes, you complete a bunch, you go th through, like, a jumping room, you go through, like, a hamster wheel room, you unlock Slim, a new pixel, um, which you use, like, three times total, and then you get all the rubies in, like, a secret, like, electric maze. It's pretty tedious, but if you know the game like I do, it's actually a lot of fun, and I've always really enjoyed it. Number four is chapter 3-1, When Geeks Attack. So... In this level, we meet Francis, who's, like, this weird, like, anime, like, sweaty, like, big chameleon nerd who has, like, its own, like, fort. And he's pretty much every Redditor ever, <laughs> or, like, every Nintendo fanboy. And what he does is he kidnaps Tippy, and you're really nervous, and what you gotta do is you gotta rescue Tippy, and you travel through the Bitlands, which is a really cool-looking chapter, where, like, it's all, like, 8-bit and digital and really cool. And then that's when you find Bowser, you face him off, He's be he acts like a big baby because he doesn't want to go with Mario and Peach, but he accepts. You also defeat his castle beforehand, and then you unlock Bowser, who's totally OP, so yeah, it's a really fun level. Number 3 is 8-3, Countdown to Destruction. Now, Countdown to Destruction is one of the most ominous or like foreboding levels in the game, because you have Dementio, and you gotta chase him through like the 8 areas of the game. You chase him through Lineland in Chapter 1. You chase him through Merle's Mansion in Chapter 2. Um, oh, I said in Chapter 1 in Lineland. And you chase him through Merle's Mansion in Chapter 2. Then that's when you face him. That's when you chase him through um, the... That's when you chase him through the big... The ocean, the tile pool in Chapter 3. Um, then it's the uh, um, outer space planet, like Bloopus, planet Bloop, in chapter 4. Then you travel, like, chase him through the Gap of Crag in chapter 5. Then you chase him through the World of Nothing in chapter 6. Then you chase him through the Underwear Road in chapter 7. And then you finally get back to Castle Black. You face him off of Luigi. It's a really fun battle, and if you actually choose, if you actually choose yes, because you actually have different decisions, and some will survive, some will kill you. This is one which kills you, because dementia will, like, put, like, a plant on your head and turn you into a slave, and that's really crazy. And it's overall just a really fun level. It's pretty challenging, one of the most challenging levels of the game, and I've always enjoyed it so much. Number two is chapter 3-4, The Battle of Fort Francis. This level is absolutely crazy. You travel through Fort Francis, this, this, like, huge mansion. You find Kari, one of the best pixels in the game, because she can actually have you go over platform surfaces like spikes or water, which is really useful, as you can imagine. And also what happens in it is when you're going through... You have to play as Peach, like, when you reach a certain room, because when you get the keys to unlock Tippy from Evil Francis, he, he has a dating simulator with Peach. It's probably one of the best parts of the game, outside of the, the very end, the final level, which I'll get into in a second. It's absolutely crazy. And then you get, and then you save Tippy, and it's <laughs> there's so much fun. Francis is such an idiot, but he's such a fun character, too. Finally, we have number one, chapter 8-4, Tippy and Count Blick. This is the final level in the game. 
And even, um, this game is 14 now, so I think I can delve into the spoiler which is pretty deep here. It's a pretty average, um, it's a pretty, like, challenging level, it's like a bunch of, like, challenging guys. It's pretty average for Count Black, but it's still also a lot of fun, challenging enemies. And then you finally get the Count Black. You face him on, and, you, um, and without, you don't actually don't have Bowser or Peach or Luigi, and you're really nervous, but then all three of them show up, and they actually help you and save the day by fighting Count Black. That's when he loses control of the... That's when he loses control of the Chaos Heart. And that's when Dementio takes it. And try, and he becomes um, Super Dementio. Fusing with Luigi is mind control. Because he keeps shouting green. And he has the Luigi hat. And then he faces him up. And then Count Black and Tippy, they use the power of the Pure Hearts to stop him. And then, um, and then, they, have to, um, and then they have to use the Pure Hearts to sacrifice themselves. It's just a beautiful way to end a beautiful game, like, the st story-wise, of course, and music-wise, too. Like, the music is, like, beautiful, the story is beautiful, it's a phenomenal way to end this game, and it's always been one of my favorite parts of Mario's story. So thank you for watching, and if you do have Super Paper Mario, like, a copy of it, remind it that it's its 14th birthday, and say congratulations. Bye.